Hey y'all, it's Elisa, the Scrappy Wife behind ScrappyWife.com and today I have an art journaling process video for you. I am in my Dina Wakely Media Journal and um, upon some of y'all's advice, I am going to start skipping around the pages instead of going in order to try to save the binding. So I skipped towards the back and I'm going to work on this combination of burlap and watercolor paper. I pulled this picture out of a Jane Davenport art book. It's called Whimsical and Wild and I would like to use this lady right here. I picked out one of my very favorite stencils, um, a butterfly, and then I have this. I'm not sure if I will use it or not, but loved the shine and loved the sentiment. So I will put you all on fast forward. I'm also planning on using a few more supplies. So if I end up grabbing those I will make sure to link them down below otherwise let's go I actually start by cutting out the image of this beautiful woman because I know she is gonna be the center of my page and when I saw the butterfly stencil it's one of my favorites and I knew this girl would look beautiful with butterfly wings behind her so I'm gonna layer those pieces kind of figuring out the position of if she's gonna be a little bit off-center and excited to use that burlap. Now these are the Arteza um, acrylic markers and it's like a paint marker just like um, any other paint pen that you probably have heard of and this comes in a set of 40 colors. Now Arteza sent these to me for review. This is my first time using them besides kind of setting them up and um, doing a color swatch and I actually specifically asked for these paint pens, these paint markers because I think um, they are fantastic for art journaling and you guys they turned out great and this specific um, not this entry but this specific journal this Dina Wakely journal is one of the reasons I wanted to kind of try some different paint pens because with the burlap and with the denim in here I just wasn't sure what kind of mediums would work well that I would also feel comfortable using and these paint pens really really worked fantastic so you can see i'm working here on the acrylic um, on this side of the butterfly the butterfly goes through some transformations very appropriate and um, on this side i feel like i'm i think i'm gonna color it in solid it's all gonna be solid on the other side i meant for it to be an outline and that's so that's how i started it ends up changing as most art journaling pages do and taking a few turns but you can see i've just selected a handful of the colors there are great variety in here i can't believe 40 different colors in one set is fantastic and i'm super pumped with how well they work and you'll see they'll make another appearance here in just a moment so these are the Arteza metallic watercolors, which I've also done a review on. So I'll make sure to link that video. And the original plan for this page was to have the colors on the right side there, the right side of the wings kind of bleeding out and coming out from the wing as if she were kind of in a blur in motion. And it just didn't quite work out. The colors really soaked into this pressed paper that's in here and I just didn't like what it looked like. It wasn't bold enough for me. So I do finish painting them in and then I end up going in a different direction. You can see there, I wanted them to all kind of bleed together and they just weren't quite bold enough um, the metallic wise on this paper. So I'm going to come through. Here's where I'm trying to make them kind of work together. I'm bringing an iridescent white in to kind of see if they will blend and they do it's just a much softer look than I was going for so then I decide well I'm just gonna go for it now and I'm going to try to add this actual bleeding effect that I was going for so I'm now outside the butterfly wings layering on colors and I'm, then I'm coming through with clean water and encouraging those colors to run and to bleed down the paper and I'm just gonna keep layering on the colors and that's something that's great about watercolors in general and about these is that they really do layer pretty well so i'm able to achieve the the saturation that i want just by working in these different layers so i come in a few times i really want those to bleed down one last time to really add some extra shadowing up there at the top letting it bleed and flow and blend and i do like the blurred um, feeling that I end up with over here and then I'll address what I want to do inside the wings after that. I decided to move to the left side and I wanted to fill in all of the empty space or the negative space there with black. If I had done this with a paintbrush, with an acrylic paintbrush, it would have been messy. My hand is just not steady enough to fill in all of those little gaps. It just would have been a mess, which is why I was so excited 
that this paint pen had such great coverage on this burlap. It was very easy to do, very easy to color in. I didn't have to worry about it bleeding through. And in fact, you'll see, um, I'm, hopefully I didn't cut it out, but I flip over it. There is not a lot of bleed. Um, I do get some bleed through when I'm playing with gesso later on this page, but the, um, it doesn't bleed through the burlap. It's not going to bleed through over here. I decide, well, I'm going to go ahead and come and fill this side in just like I did previously with the other side. And that way they will be symmetrical, just like butterflies are just filling in all those different colors and it's nice and bold. Look at it pop against that white. I like the difference in the textures that I'm getting playing with these markers on different surfaces and it just worked so well getting to fill it in. Like you see, I can trace the edges here and um, I'm just, I was just super pleased with the coverage that it was having. Um, the flow of the pen worked really well. I just really liked it. The other great thing about this set of pens is that it comes with two sets of nibs. So right now I have kind of the bolder round tip nib in, and then it comes with a full set of really skinny ones. And so if you are wanting a skinnier writing, something to do, um, I don't know, some more delicate titles, you can totally change those out. They give you tweezers and, and, um, and the whole set of nibs, you can try that. Now I'm coming back in with these metallic watercolors and I have never tried to watercolor on burlap, but here we go. And it actually worked pretty well. I was pretty impressed. So I'm holding the burlap up because I don't want it to just seep through the other side. You do have some that goes through, but I didn't want it to bleed onto the next white page. So layering on the colors, because again, I really wanted the butterfly to kind of feel like it was in motion, like the colors were just bleeding off of the butterfly that they were going out into the world was the feeling I was hoping for. And I think it is achieved pretty well. I really liked um, how it worked out on the burlap. As much as I love the butterfly and the boldness, I do want to knock it down a step and I'm trying to figure out where I want my stencil place and I'm coming back in with white gesso which you all recommended to me and has been a game changer. If you do not have white gesso in your arsenal as an art journaler then please run out and get some. I don't know why I resisted so long but it is fabulous. So I'm just using it over my stencil. It really is going to serve to add a little bit more texture, a little bit more interest, and then it just knocks the butterfly back a little bit, the butterfly wings, which is um, something I wanted to do. I didn't want them to overwhelm the page. It does work pretty well on this burlap. Um, a little bit of the gesso goes through to the other side, and of course I'll, I'll be able to deal with that when I get to that page art journaling wise, but I get a little bit sloppy, a little bit impatient at this point. So you'll see the lines around my stencil. I rushed a little bit too much and didn't take my time. So it gets a little bit sloppy here and there, but that's okay. It's just a background, just a texture to add on there. This also would have been fantastic to have done with texture paste. So it really held that dimension. I just don't have that much texture paste left and have not had a chance to um, get some from Michaels or from Amazon or anything like that recently. So I will add one more area of stencil here um, so that I kind of work in groups at three, which is a rule I like to stick with. I'm trying really hard to not cover up all the space in this art journaling project. You guys know that I love to cover up everything and use all the things on all the pages. And I want to appreciate some of the texture on these pages. And so I'm just um, trying to leave some of it as is. Here I turned my stencil over and then wanted to just get the gesso that was left on the page just to add a little bit of texture there on the right side. This next part was an experiment and I'll be honest, I loved it. And I cannot wait to try to do something a little bit more intricate on another art journaling page. I just have some embroidery floss here. I chose purple, it's one of my favorite colors. And I'm gonna add stitching all around the left side of that page through the burlap. And it took me a couple tries to kind of get it right. I had to thin out the embroidery floss, like pull some of the strands out to work well but i think it would be so fun to add more stitching detail in on some art journaling pages it's something that i've never really done before with this burlap it makes it really easy you would have a double-sided kind of feel 
So I'll definitely be kind of thinking and planning. I'm not really someone that's ever done a lot of embroidery or anything like that, but I think adding this dimensional detail um, really made a difference for me um, on the page. I do wish, you'll see, I do go around the whole left side, but I wish I'd done something on the right side, added a, a stitch pattern at least, so I might go back and take another look at that. Now you can see what blood through, it's not too bad over there on the back, definitely something that I can work with and um, create on top of on the back side there. I'm now ready to add my Jane Girl, which is what I call any of the beautiful sketches by Jane Davenport. I just love her aesthetic. And I'm using a tape roller and liquid adhesive. The liquid adhesive will be what really holds this in place, but the tape roller kind of secures it in place while I'm working, if that makes sense, so that um, it doesn't shift while I still add to the project here. So I have her over there and then I have these journal tattoos or these rub-ons. They're also from Jane Davenport. I believe I got them at Michael's. They are kind of older now, which is why I'm trying to use them up. I've used lots of the pieces. Um, and so I'm going to add a little bit of floral to the lady's bodice right here. And then I'm going to come back and embellish that even more. So for these rub-ons, you just take, I'm taking the kind of blunt end of my scissors, the handle, and rubbing it down on there. And then you pick up the clear plastic part. It's like putting a temporary tattoo on your skin, except without water. So I'll rub that one on, adding a little bit right here. Um, and the cool thing about it is once you start to lift it up just a little bit, you can see if you got all the parts. And if you didn't, you just lay it back down. See, I'm like, oops, that didn't rub off. So I lay it back down, rub it a little bit more, and then it is all there. So I like that I can um, kind of customize this drawing. It's not my own drawing, but that's one of the fun things about art journaling is taking someone else's inspiration, some of their work and changing it up. And that is something that's totally allowed in the art journaling world. Um, so I love that I got to use that. So the look that this girl had in her eye is where I got the title for the page. She definitely looks like something amazing is about to happen. Like she is about to just take off. And I like the butterfly wings behind her and that idea. So what I'm going to do is I have this chipboard piece that's the um, really intricate glittery ampersand. And I'm going to title the page Watch and Wait. Almost like just watch and wait because I'm gonna do something amazing. So I like the idea. I definitely feel like that's kind of the look that she has. And so I wanted to capture that in the title. I'm coming again with that um, Arteza acrylic marker in black and it works really great. I still have the bold tip in there. So I definitely wanna come back and try um, the finer tips to see how well they work, but I'm able to go over it, smooth it out even more. This is kind of a rough watercolor paper. So adding there. Um, now I was going to leave her black and white, but then I decided she stood out too much. I wanted to add just a little bit of color detail. So again, I'm using those acrylic markers and they work fantastic. I'm on her bodice. I have this mermaid stencil that I traced onto there. I'm filling in some of the mermaid scales, I guess you would say with a dark blue. And then what I end up doing is coming back with several shades of green and they actually blend really well. So I wasn't sure how how it would look having kind of going for this ombre look, but you'll see in a moment that it works really nicely. Again, this is an acrylic paint in here. And if I had come back freehand with a really fine acrylic brush, there is no way that I would have been able to stay in that stencil. It would have ended up being a hot mess. And then of course, coming around these florals and trying to stay um, away from them. I want them to stay in black and white. I just want the bodice of the dress to have this mermaid look. I was really pleased with how well these markers did. So again, I'm putting that one down and now I'm going to start blending in and I love the look I got. The colors are lovely next to each other and the markers really did kind of come in and out of each other very nicely. The different greens and then the blue um, pops off of that. So I feel like she's like my mermaid butterfly, <laughs> kind of an interesting combination, but I love how it ended up. And now I'm coming with that third color and just look, there's no like definitive line. It just, it worked out really well. I was super pleased and I cannot wait to do just a little bit more blending 
um, with these markers to see how well they hold up. And this is coloring on basically like a marker paper. So it's holding up really nicely. Once I had started in on her bodice, it was like, let's just go for it. So I'm going to fill in her earrings. Again, I'm going to work with these three different greens to bring all of those colors, kind of move them up to the top. And I'll actually color in um, her headband. And I couldn't decide if that was hair or a headband. And I went with a headband. So I'm going to pull out that same blue and add this right here. And I think it, I think it looks like a headband. I think it could go either way. So I went with headband. I'll add in another blue just for contrast and to give it a little bit more interest there. So it's not so solid and adding some pink to her lips, a really rich pink, the same pink that is in the wings so that it coordinates really nicely. And I come back adding just a little bit of highlight with a white um, marker. So you get that shine on her lips and I come back and fill in a few other um, pieces. It's not a solid colored in um, lady in the end, but I like the hints of color. I think it draws her into the page. She's not so stark that way. I'm able to add my own personality. Of course, I always love um, adding brunette hair because I have brown hair. And so I like to um, imagine this butterfly girl with some brown hair. And I will add a little bit more dimension with some darker pieces. And then actually when I put it on, I'm able to smudge it with my fingers, which I think is really a cool effect so I don't have to have those stark lines I can smudge them and move them just a little bit so that it's um, not quite as harsh I decide to go with green for her eyes just to change it up a little bit and then I'll come back in with a gorgeous um, peach tone to add a little bit of highlight I like that I can draw these lines in and again I can smudge them slightly so it's not quite as stark I'm just adding in hints of it but for the most part I will leave her the um, white color of the paper just hints of a skin tone on the side and then my page is done thank you to Arteza for sending me this acrylic marker set I really enjoyed it and I can't wait to use it in future projects if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and consider hitting that subscribe button as well as the bell notification button. I have all of the supplies I use down below, including those Arteza acrylic markers, so make sure to check that out. And I also have a link to my email newsletter. I hope you have a fabulous day and as always, keep it creative.